The Navy wants to develop robot ships over the next few years and use artificial intelligence to replace sailors in battle. To discuss the plan and potential pitfalls is Tom Shugart. He's a senior fellow at the Center for a New American Security and a former submarine warfare officer for the U.S. Navy. Tom, welcome. Thanks, Mamie. Great to be here. So briefly spell out the benefits of autonomous ships for us. Well, I think there's, a, there's kind of both pull and push factors that are at work here uh, in, in the Navy's drive to, to deploy autonomous ships. From the pull perspective, there's technological advancements that have allowed these sorts of developments to go forward, autonomy, AI, uh, remote control, satellite communications, et cetera. But certainly a lot of what this is about is about China and that you've got a push in the form of the threat from the PLA Navy and in particular the PLA Rocket Force. You have an entire branch of the Chinese military that's developed anti-ship ballistic missiles that threaten the carriers that are have traditionally been the centerpiece of U.S. power projections. So there's an effort afoot to distribute the ships that we have to make them more difficult to hit and have them be able to attack from more numerous vectors. So there's a drive there uh, to do that. There's also just the scale of threat from China requires the development of lower cost uh, alternatives to be able to provide the necessary uh, capabilities at a cost that's affordable with what look like maybe flat budgets for some time. So Tom, what kind of naval missions will these ships be used for? What, what would they actually be doing? I think the book's pretty wide open uh, on the longer term. In the shorter term, I think what we're most likely to see are adjunct missile magazines essentially to expand the number of missiles that our uh, surface forces could carry and also sensors. So I think in, on the scale of the ships you're looking at, the larger end ships would be carrying more missiles, uh, probably operating in company with uh, manned ships, which might make it easier uh, to make that happen, uh, although potentially independently as well. Uh, and then on the smaller end, I think you're looking at more sensors. Uh, you know, we have an example here from the Ukraine uh, conflict where I think that it's pretty good odds that a Ukrainian a UAV provided targeting for the coastal defense cruise missile that sank the Moskva. So there's a potential example of an unmanned system providing uh, sensor inputs for long range weapon systems. And I can see that sort of thing happening as well with smaller ships that are deployed further forward where they might be under greater threat uh, and might be better to use an unmanned platform to provide that sensor input for our larger ships. But how practical is it to be able to carry out missions, especially if something goes wrong without a crew? Well, I mean, there are going to be risks that have to be taken in order to make this happen. Uh, and I think, you know, there's there was a recent GAO report that talked about uh, some of the technological risks and programmatic risks associated with unmanned systems and certainly anything new that you're going to deploy uh, is going to have some risks associated with it. But what I think we have to keep in mind are that um, not taking those sort of risks anymore with the threat, the scale of the challenge and the threat we have from China uh, may not be an option. I mean, you can turn down the programmatic and technological risks if you want, but you're just going to make the operational risk with China go up uh, commensurately. So uh, there's for sure going to be some technological challenges and things that, that will need to be done that we haven't done before. So what's the plan for deployment and how far along is the Navy in operationalizing these unmanned ships? It's still pretty early days, I believe. I mean, I, I think they're, they're still doing They have done a number of exercises and there's more exercises ongoing. Uh, from the development perspective, most of the surface vessels are in, uh, essentially all the, the vessels that we're talking about are largely in the prototyping phase. Um, we're not at rate, you know, any kind of uh, full production uh, at this point. So there's still development happening and that's, that's the way it's gonna need to be. I think we're probably at sort of a, putting the airplane together while it flies sort of a point at this point. And you know, you mentioned China and their capabilities. Do we know anything about, um, are they pursuing these kinds of plans? Do we know what their capability is in unmanned ships? There's been some open source discussion and pictures uh, of some very small unmanned ships. I have not seen anything of them pursuing anything as large as what the, our Navy is uh, appearing to develop. There's also been some open source, um, well, although ostensibly civilian development of unmanned uh, undersea vehicles by Chinese organizations. And the thing we have to remember about, about them is that, you know, China is all about military civil fusion. So if it looks like it's civilian and it could have uh, military applications, we might as well assume it's at the service of the state. Um, so 
at, at the open source level, it's tough to tell exactly what they're working on, but they are working on something on, on a, essentially every angle. And would these ships, Tom, fire weapons autonomously? I mean, because that's obviously going to raise some ethical issues. So there are uh, DOD, there's DOD regulation that requires, has pretty strict limits on how much uh, lethal autonomous systems can do. Uh, essentially, there has to be some sort of human interaction uh, in order uh, for them to be deployed. Uh, I think what we'll see, you know, there's a lot of options. Uh, there's man in the loop where you've got a, a human what that's that's taking part in decision making. Uh, then you have man on the loop, which is someone observing what an autonomous system is doing and stepping in where necessary. True autonomy right now is, uh, I believe, beyond what DOD regulations allow. Uh, I think we're going to be challenged over time, though, as you know, we know for a fact that that one of the PLA's greatest uh, points of interest in warfare is disrupting communications uh, and affecting the systems that we use to to do command and control. So, if we are depending upon links to make these systems work, uh, that's going to be a real challenge. And quickly, Tom, is there a plan for unmanned submarines? Uh, a development of unmanned undersea vehicles is certainly underway. The the Navy has multiple sizes. Uh, large, medium, and then XL UUV. XL UUV is essentially a 80 or so foot long uh, unmanned diesel electric submarine, essentially. Um, it has, and I, I, think, I think the initial uh, planned mission is most likely gonna be um, I, you know, I, reconnaissance and mining, uh, you know, that's, which seems, that's a, seems pretty doable to me. You know, go to a designated place, drop off designated things and come back. All right, uh, Tom, really well, we're out of time, form. but thanks very much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you, Mimi. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.